In farm animal medicine, we are often dealing with relatively young populations, especially when you compare them to human medicine or companion animal medicine. This affects the type of diseases we focus on. So with farm animal medicine, we spend a lot of our time dealing with infectious diseases or nutritional diseases. As neoplastic conditions like cancer tend to be much more common as animals get older, we don't often see cancers or other types of growth in cattle or sheep. Sometimes there is overlap. For example, in sheep you have OPA or Yagziki, that is an infectious virus, but it causes a lung tumor. And in cattle there is EBL, enzootic bovine leukosis. This is also caused by a virus and causes cancer of the white blood cells. For a human example, you just have to look at HPV, that's the human papillomavirus. Infection with HPV is often a precursor to cervical cancer in women. Despite these infectious examples, cancers in livestock are still relatively rare. The commonest type of cancer most farmers will see is known as cancer eye, and you can guess where they get it. Cancer eye is most commonly a squamous cell carcinoma of the eyelids or the eyeball. In some countries with a high incidence, for example Australia, we'll talk about why they have a high incidence in a minute. It's a pretty common cause of carcass condemnation when cattle reach the abattoir. These squamous cell carcinomas or SCCs can start in a number of different ways. This includes plaques, keratomas, ulcers and more. Often that SCC will start to bleed and affected eyes will weep. Just like other cancers, SCCs can spread, we call that metastasis, either through local infiltration or through hitching a ride in the bloodstream. Although the rate of this spread is highly variable. This is a case we saw a while ago, an SCC of the third eyelid. In terms of treatment, every case is different. It's gonna depend on how far it's progressed and what the likely outcomes are. Individual cases require individual attention. So if you have one, of course, go and talk to your vet. In general, some attention is going to be necessary, however, these don't go away by themselves. A surgical approach is common to excise the tumor, and in my experience, it's often total removal of the eye. We call that enucleation. Again, here's that case I just showed you after having the eye removed. Cattle actually cope remarkably well with just one eye. Just like any other cancer, generally, success is much greater when it's caught early. So if you suspect any cancer eye in your cattle, get the vet to look at it pronto. Getting it taken out earlier is going to reduce the chances of it spreading. If there is evidence of spread to local lymph nodes or other organs, your vet may decide that euthanasia is the best option. But again, each case is different. Get them looked at sooner rather than later. If we're trying to think about prevention, we have to understand the risk factors. To start with, just like other cancers, older animals are more susceptible. So we typically don't see squamous cell carcinomas in animals under five. Another risk factor is exposure to ultraviolet radiation. Now, clearly we're not going to keep cattle in the shade, but anything that increases the intensity of that UV radiation, so for example, somewhere where it's sunnier, somewhere where you're at higher altitude or lower latitude on the globe, this is going to make it a higher risk environment. This is just the reason that Australia has a high instance of these SCCs. So those first two factors, there's not much we can do about. It's not really feasible to keep a cow herd under the age of five, nor is it possible to uproot the farm and move it to an entirely different climate. And you probably wouldn't want to anyway. The next two factors though are controllable and they're linked. It is breed and pigmentation. SCCs usually start on unpigmented skin or eye tissue. Pigment appears to have a protective effect. Of course, this is linked to breed. Certain breeds have patterns where they are pigmented or non-pigmented around the eyes. Non-pigmented classically is going to be Herefords, but also simies, certain white-faced Frisians, other breeds I'm sure you can think of compared to say an Angus or a Murray Gray. They have pigmented skin that's gonna be protective for them. Beyond this, there also appear to be certain sire differences. Certain family lines appear to have a predisposition to SCCs. Now the incidence of cancer eye in the UK is pretty low, but for farms in climates exposed to more UV radiation, selection for breeds or individuals with pigment on the eye and eyelid, which are both linked to selecting for one, selects for the other, are going to be sensible selection criteria. If these growths get to a certain size where they're gonna be compromised in transport, this may make these animals unfit for sale or slaughter. Likewise, if widespread metastasis is found in the carcass, the chances are it's going to be condemned. If you're struggling with any of this and you need a professional opinion, of course, go and ring your vet. So the headlines are, if you suspect a case of cancer eye, 
get it checked out sooner rather than later. And the biggest thing you can do to prevent it is keep cattle that have pigment around and in their eyes. A gold star, if you notice that the case I showed you did actually have pigmented skin, but it was the third eyelid which was unpigmented that was affected. Well done if you noticed that. Third eyelid pigmentation is not linked to eyeball or normal eyelid pigmentation. A lot of this information I've taken from an Australian bulletin. I've put the link to that and some more resources, of course, in the video description. If you need any further information, go and talk to your vet. I hope you enjoyed that one. Something a bit different, something you might only see a handful of times, but it is good to recognize it when you see it. If you enjoyed that, don't be afraid to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, leave me a comment and a thumbs up. I'll see you for the next video.